Hi and welcome back. So the circuit here is a little bit changed since you last saw it. I've actually recorded an additional video where I add this circuitry in. But when I came to edit that, I uh, decided the explanation I'd included in there on a few bits wasn't good enough. So um, I'm expanding that out into this video before I uh, finish editing the other. So what I'd like to talk about is resource contention. Okay, so here's our clock and here's our pipeline stages. So if we imagine we've dispatched an instruction into the pipeline. So in the first it's fetched, then it progresses through each of the subsequent pipeline stages. But while it's in pipeline stage one, we are hopefully pulling in one more instruction and so on. So we have with four pipeline stages, we have up to four instructions in flight at a time. So with this capacity for multiple things to happen at once, we have the possibility that more than one instruction is going to attempt to utilize the same processor resource simultaneously. And that's obviously going to cause us a problem. So our first design principle has to be avoid this wherever possible. So we want to group up functionality within the pipeline stages. So you know, all the instructions that are going to modify the address registers, we're going to try and stick them all into pipeline stage one. And then that means that we're not going to get clashes between those. But you know, some of it is going to be unavoidable. Now we can make a very simple example of this. Let's imagine instruction one is going to be reading a byte from memory. So pipeline stage zero is to fetch, it gets read in. Then we have pipeline stage one, which it's possible that won't actually do anything for the instruction, but it's also possible it might be doing some address computation. And then in pipeline stage two, it's actually going to perform the memory read. That's going to require and access to the bus and up here instruction free we're attempting to read that in simultaneously so we've got a clash here so we've uh, we've got to work out what to do about that and the way we deal with that is you know we've got no choice we don't know in advance what's what's going to be read in from the instruction so it's not like we can just ignore it we're going to have to get rid of the instruction somehow. And we do that by building circuitry that is going to emit a NOP instruction in the fetch unit if for some reason it can't access memory. Now we can follow this through and imagine a worst case scenario where every instruction was accessing memory. And so every other instruction coming out of the fetch unit was going to be a NOP. And so we'd only be executing one instruction every other cycle. But you know, that's, uh, that's still pretty good. It's a, a lot faster than a lot of uh, early microprocessors. If we have to access memory at all, we're not going to quite be scalar, which means we're in executing one instruction every clock cycle. We are going to get um, somewhere between 50% and 100%, which is going to be pretty good. The, the next kind of class of contention that uh, we, we want to worry about is what I would call software avoidable contention. So, if we imagine here that um, instruction one, which is our instruction that's reading in from memory, is going to write into a register, and then instruction two is going to do something with that register, but it's going to do, perform that operation in pipeline stage one. Now, this is a problem because the actual read hasn't happened yet, but whatever is happening in pipeline stage one might access that instruction and the value it's going to operate on is not going to be what the, the programmer expected if they just wrote down a series of instructions and expected them to complete wholly in sequence. So that's, um, that's an interesting problem. But the actual reality is I don't think we need to design any hardware for, for handling this. 
The reason why I say that is I've actually programmed in my career for a number of different processes which suffer from this problem, where you have instructions and you have a pipeline that in some cases is quite a lot deeper than this, but you have some information in the documentation that will tell you where certain instructions will actually complete and produce their result back into the registers. And if you were to dispatch an instruction that used that beforehand, you would either get the previous value in the register, or in some cases you would get a, a non-determined value. And in actual fact, for um, uh, some of the games consoles I've worked on, the, the, the fact that we have this information and we know that, say, perhaps um, access to a register at one cycle later is going to still see the old value, is something that I've actually written code that takes advantage of. Often when you're writing low-level code that's designed to be particularly high performance, you run into a problem where it feels like you don't have enough registers and it's possible to write code when you're aware of these issues that you couldn't fit into as many registers as you've got. So I particularly remember a piece of code I wrote for the original Ghost Rider video game. I can't mention the console I was, I was programming for, for intellectual property reasons, but there was a, a piece of the, the graphics code there which I managed to get quite an interesting speed up via exploiting this kind of mechanic. So this is some of the weird side effects that you can get from uh, software avoidable issues if you understand them. And the reality is, if we can avoid it, we should avoid it. So if I'm aware that a result's not ready yet, I should perhaps do something different. Now, if you look at modern CPUs, like uh, you know, anything in the x86 series, they don't suffer from this problem. They've got... Uh, fairly complicated hardware that is looking out for the, the states of, of registers and, and the various flags to make sure that instructions all appear to complete in sequence and operate on the correct data. But of course, if we were to do this, we would, we would be adding some circuitry, say, between pipeline stage 0 and 1 as an extra stage, which would look at an instruction, see if there are any contention issues, and then hold that instruction back so the operation is completed in sequence. And if you try and start building that circuitry, it's going gonna, it's gonna to add an awful lot of complexity to the, the, the processor I'm trying to build here. Some of it's going to become quite impenetrable, and I, I, don't, I don't think it really fits in with the goals here. There is one particular class of software avoidable contention though I would like to handle, and that is anything that is potentially damaging. Now, the reason why something might be damaging is we have looked before at how if two chips were to drive a value onto the same bus simultaneously, we would have a a theoretical short between the, uh, the the power rail and ground um, if any of the bits in they were tr trying to assert onto the bus were different and this would be very bad we could uh, we could actually damage the chips so any cases where that might happen we should avoid those so one of the places where I definitely think um, we're going to have to worry about that is if pipeline stage two is dealing with writing 8-bit quantities such as a, from a memory read or the completion of an ALU operation. And pipeline stage one, where one of the things we're doing is performing operations on the 16-bit registers, then we've got the case where the transfer register can pretend to be two 8-bit registers and be a 16-bit register. So you could potentially have one half of it being written to in pipeline stage two and the rest of it being written to in pipeline stage one. Now, the only thing we can do there, if we're not going to introduce very complex circuitry, is make it so one is going to take precedence over the other and we're going to have a programming bug there but we can definitely build circuitry that will stop it uh, having damaging side effects okay so av avoiding problems as much as we can writing code that doesn't cause problems and in some cases can take advantage of them is uh, is, is going to be good and using the software sequencing where we uh, we have a, a list of operations that we we shouldn't do is it's going to be uh, an extra layer of complexity when we come to start writing code for this but I'm I'm fairly comfortable we're still going to be able to write some some good code 
without uh, compromising our performance too much. But we will be avoiding the potentially damaging cir circumstances. And there'll be a, a few places along the way where we could perhaps software sequence uh, our way away from a problem where if there's a nice and easy way to solve it, we'll, uh, we'll do that anyway. But anyway, I'm uh, going to finish off uh, editing the, the next video over the next day or so and uh, hopefully get that one up soon where you can uh, see the, uh, the workings and the logic behind the, the small piece of circuit you had a sneak peek on at the start of this. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.